Let us have a look at this question, which is about one middle-aged lady, 43-year-old woman, and she is admitted to the emergency because she's telling there is a deep abdominal pain in her epigastrium. So that gives you an idea. The pain could be arising from the foregut region, embryologically, the referred pain is in the epigastrium from the foregut. Then it is mentioned on examination, there was some retroperitoneal infection. Now, there are some retroperitoneal structures like uh, pancreas, whose referred pain can be felt in the epigastrium. It is again a foregut derivative chiefly, though the pain can be felt more in the back and less in the epigastrium. Then it is mentioned there was some artery. It has been eroded, this artery which is actually running on the superior border of the pancreas. Now this is some anatomy which immediately should make us think of one artery which runs this course but supplies spleen. Not only it supplies the spleen, it will also supply the pancreas and some foregut derivatives like the stomach. What you find here are the options which are coming from the foregut artery celiac trunk branches and as I just mentioned, the artery which runs along the superior border of pancreas is actually the splenic artery. So your answer should be choice number three. Let us have a look over the diagram which mentions us about the course of the artery. But we'll keep our answer as choice number three here. So looking from the front view, the region of the foregut, the artery of the foregut called as the celiac trunk, which is actually a branch of the abdominal aorta, is giving three branches. The largest and the tortuous artery coming from celiac trunk is the splenic artery running behind the stomach in the stomach bed. It's quite tortuous to allow the movement of the spleen. The name is splenic artery and the splenic artery is going to supply the spleen shown here. It enters the hilum of the spleen. But then it will be giving multiple branches not only to spleen but also to the stomach like short gastric artery towards the greater curvature fundus of the stomach as shown here. And then it is also giving a long gastric artery name left gastroepiploic artery. The left gastroepiploic artery which runs along the greater curvature of the stomach. Now as we are talking about the splenic artery it's runs on the superior border of pancreas which is also lying behind the stomach. It will be something like this. The superior border of pancreas which is then continuing as the tail of pancreas reaching the hilum of the spleen. So on the superior border of pancreas, the splenic artery keeps running and giving branches. One other thing which you can notice is the celiac trunk has given the left gastric artery which is running along the lesser curvature of the stomach and then it is giving us the common hepatic artery. The common name come because it is further going to give two branches. So this is the common hepatic artery which is giving us the branches namely the hepatic artery proper going towards the liver and then you can see the gastro duodenal artery passing behind the first parts of duodenum. The gastro duodenal artery may be bleeding if there is a posterior perforation of duodenal ulcer. Whereas if there is a posterior perforation of stomach pathology then it might be affecting the splenic artery. And one other thing you notice is along the lesser curvature of stomach you not only have the left gastric artery but also the right gastric artery. Anatomically there is one on the left, there is one right. And the one on the right is a branch of common hepatic artery. So this right gastric artery which is shown as the branch of the common hepatic artery may have variable origin. It may be given by some other arterial trunk as well. But the point is the right gastric artery is also running along the lesser curvature of stomach, supplying the lesser curvature of stomach. Anyhow, now let us focus back upon our question. The patient which we had with epigastric pain, actually she was having a bleed from the splenic artery running on the superior border of pancreas. As we can understand, our answer should be the splenic artery, which is a branch from the celiac trunk, the foregut artery, whereas the right gastric artery, it was running along the lesser curvature of the stomach. And then if you are talking about the left gastroepiploic artery, it was running along the greater curvature of the stomach. And when it comes to the gastroduodenal artery, it was running behind the first part of the duodenum, prone to bleeding if there is a posterior perforation of the duodenal ulcer. 
commonly occurring in the first part, but anterior perforations are more common compared with posterior perforations. Plus, there is one other information, dorsal pancreatic artery, which descends behind the neck of the pancreas, is also going to supply the pancreas. It itself is a branch of splenic artery as such. Now, as you can witness, while dealing with a question, what we found is there is some active guidance provided to you that in the presenting complaints or examination in the step of the question where exactly do you need to focus upon which terms are important will be highlighted this is a feature of the latest qbank version 3 you could see there was a precise explanation in regards with the question because next time the question might change, the stem might change, the options might change. So the information which is in the explanation must be crisp but enabling you to handle any modification of the repeat question. And then you'll find additionally there are some attached treasures means more information if you wish to access. And finally there is a video solution provided which will enable you to have a better understanding and a quick revision. So these are the features of the updated QBank 3. And this QBank 3 is as good as it gets.